Hello everyone. Today's topic of discussion is infective endocarditis. Mostly I'll be dealing with the surgeon's role in it. As we all know that infective endocarditis is the most severe and potentially devastating complication of heart valve disease. Be it native valve endocarditis, prosthetic valve endocarditis or infection on the other cardiac devices. In the last 30 years, an increasingly elder population with degenerative heart valve disease and an increase in staphylococcal infection have contributed to an increase in prevalence of infective endocarditis. Increase in number of patients who undergo heart surgery or receive prosthetic valves, pacemakers and defibrillators. All these factors are associated with increased risk of infective endocarditis. Without treatment, it is almost fatal. Even at experience center, operations for infective endocarditis remain associated with the highest mortality. multi stenter studies still report in-hospital mortality of 15-20% to and one-year mortality approaching almost 40%. In this session, we will discuss what is important to a cardiac surgeon before, during and after operation of infective endocarditis and also other issues relevant to the management and follow-up of the patient after surgery. Coming on uh, briefly to the pathophysiology of infective endocarditis, the key to understanding infective endocarditis is appreciating the pathological progression. The circulating organisms like bacteria and other organisms adhere to the damaged area of endocardium or foreign material exposed in the bloodstream. Such damaged areas are the sites for development of vegetations. The organisms produce and release enzymes that disintegrate tissue primarily the valve, valve cusps and leaflets resulting in leaky valve. When it involves the an, uh, valve annulus, the infection invades the extravascular area and this is called as the invasive disease. The causative microorganisms position, whether it is on aortic, mitral or right sided valve and the type of infected valve, whether it is native or prosthetic are important for pathology and prognosis. Bacteria and fungi have a specific uh, species specific repertoire of virulence factors that allow them to establish and maintain the infective endocarditis. Emboli from these vegetations cause stroke, my mycotic aneurysms and related phenomena. Now the systemic emboli are common in patients with left sided infective endocarditis whereas the right sided infective endocarditis frequently showers the lung with septic emboli leading to pulmonary abscess and empyema. Moreover, the right-sided infective endocarditis can also be responsible for systemic emboli in patients with patent foramen oval. Now, briefly about the microbiology of infective endocarditis, which varies depending on whether the valve is native or prosthetic, and whether the infection is community acquired or healthcare associated. The organisms like staphylococci, streptococci, and enterococci are responsible for approximately 85% of all infections. The fungi, it forms a vegetations or ball, but, we, but these are usually less invasive, although they can lead to development of mycotic aneurysms and easily become disseminated. The hypothesis that infective endocarditis is a biofilm associated infection. Now, biofilm is nothing but a thin membrane like structure produced by these organisms that act as a protective layer where antimicrobial or immune mediated cells don't reach. This offers explanation as to why infective endocarditis related infections are difficult to treat and why recurrences occur even after seemingly su successful medical treatment and why surgery is often required in such patients. Now surgery not only removes the infected tissues and foreign material but also mechanically disturbs the, disturbs this biofilm and exposes residual live microorganisms to antimicrobials, antibodies and immune mediated cells. Now, prosthetic valve endocarditis is generally more invasive than native valve endocarditis and uh, more often difficult to cure with antibiotics alone. Now, biofilm formation all is also commonly occurs on prosthetic valve and this is the basis for more frequent need for surgery in prosthetic valve endocarditis. Comparing to native aortic uh, to mitral valve infective endocarditis, aortic valve infective endocarditis is more often invasive. Despite this, the outcome are worse after surgical treatment for mitral valve infective endocarditis when compared to aortic valve because 
the three important factors which con contribute to this is the patients with mitral valve infective endocarditis are already sicker with more comorbidities. The surgical anatomy of mitral valve is less favorable for invasive diseases and also obviously non-availability of allograft alternatives for invasive mitral valve disease. Uh, Right-sided infective endocarditis typically is less invasive although it is more often caused by aggressive organisms like Staphylococcus aureus. Now according to the latest American and Euro European guidelines, patients with uh, suspected infective endocarditis should ideally be referred early to centers with access to a complete team including cardiology, infectious disease control team, cardiac surgery team and all other uh, services needed to handle infective endocarditis related complications example uh, neurology, psychiatry and nephrology etc. And also surgeons operating on these patients with uh, infective endocarditis need to be well trained, experienced valve surgeon, uh, he should be very well versed in different techniques of reconstruction uh, which is needed by the patients with advanced diseases. Now diagnosis of infective endocarditis is essential for surgical planning. Diagnosis is based on clinical symptoms, physical findings, microbiological results, echocardiography and other studies. Now physical findings include Dukes or modified Dukes criteria, a transthoracic echo which must be supplemented with transesophageal echo in most cases of suspected prosthetic infective endocarditis. The transesophageal echo should be considered early when organisms with high likelihood of pyogenic complications are implicated or when there is a question about the presence or absence of valve infection based on the quality of transthoracic images. Use of imaging modalities other than echocardiography may be appropriated, appropriate in selected cases and those are ECG gated CT has comparable diagnostic performance to transesophageal echo and may be of valuable complement in preoperative evaluation of patients with aortic valve endocarditis. Multi-detector CT can be used to detect abscesses, pseudoaneurysms with a diagnostic accuracy similar to transesophageal echo and is possibly superior in providing information about the extent of any peri perivalvular extension including the anatomy of pseudoaneurysm, abscesses and fistulas. Other diagnostic modalities like SPECT CT imaging with radio labeled leukocytes and FDG PET CT imaging can also be used in securing the diagnosis and in detection of peripheral emboli and metastatic inf infectious foci. Now coming on to the indications of uh, in, uh, surgery in infective endocarditis. Uh, surgery should be performed immediately irrespective of antibiotic therapy in patients with per persistent pulmonary edema or cardiogenic shock. In other cases, if congestive heart failure disappears with medical therapy and there are no other surgical indications, intervention can be postponed to allow a period of days or weeks antibiotic treatment under careful clinical and echocardiographic observation. In patients with uh, well tolerated severe valvular regurgitation or prosthetic valve dehiscence and with no other reason for surgery, conservative therapy under careful clinical and echocardiographic observation is recommended with consideration of deferred surgery after resolution of the infection. Persistent sepsis despite adequate antibiotic therapy. In all cases, surgery for prevention of embolism must be performed very early since embolic risk is highest during the first few days of the therapy. Surgery is uh, contraindicated for at least one month after intracranial hemorrhage until unless a neurosurgical or endovascular interventions can be performed to reduce the risk of bleeding. Now timing of surgery in infective endocarditis is very important and it is usually emergent surgery, urgent surgery or elective surgery. Now emergent surgery that is uh, performed within 24 hours uh, is performed in patients with uh, native or prosthetic valve infective endocarditis and severe congestive heart failure. Uh, and cardiogenic shock caused by acute valvular regurgitation, severe prosthetic dysfunction, fistulas or cardiac fistulas in a cardiac chamber or pericardial space. Now, uh, urgent surgery with, that is uh, performed within days 
uh, in patients with native or prosthetic valve endocarditis with persistent heart failure and signs of poor hemodynamic tolerance. Now, prosthetic valve endocarditis caused by staphylococcal infection and gram negative uh, infections are also uh, these are these are also an indication for urgent surgery. And other indications for urgent surgeries are large vegetations more than 10 mm with embolic events, large vegetations more than 10 mm with other predictors of complicated causes, and very large vegetations more than 15 mm, especially if conservative surgeries uh, for wild preservation is available. Now, elective surgeries uh, is usually performed during the in hospital stay in patients with severe aortic mit or mitral valve regurgitation with congestive heart failure and those patients who are showing good response to medical therapy like prosthetic valve endocarditis patients with uh, valvular dehiscence or congestive heart failure uh, are showing good response to medical therapy or presence or abs presence of abscess or perianual perianular extension uh, persistent infection with extra cardiac foci where extra cardiac foci has been excluded uh, now coming on to the surgical techniques uh, surgeons taking up these cases should be very well trained in various valve repair and reconstruction techniques. If there is aortic valve endocarditis, uh, anterior leaflet of mitral valve and its cordae should be examined for any drop lesions. This is usually done through trans uh, aortic annulus. And uh, sometimes there might be a need to enter left atrium to visualize the posterior mitral valve leaflet and its annulus to find any abnormality or infect infection foci. Whereas in mitral valve endocarditis, aortic valve leaflet involvement is unlikely if there is absence of thrill or murmur at aortic area, if aortic valve is competent and if there is no evidence of aortic uh, valve vegetation. Now where to look for this abscess? Uh, in case of mitral valve infective endocarditis, the posterior inferior, posterior inferior portion of mitral annulus should be inspected and looked for myocardial ring abscess. And in case of aortic root abscess, uh, posterior to membranous portion of interventricular septum and posterior portion of septum uh, anterior to left main uh, coronary artery is the site where you have to thoroughly look for abscess and if possible it has to be drained. Now, uh, Surgical technique uh, in mitral valve endocarditis. Uh, repair is attempted if there is a healed, small or discrete vegetations which does not involve the major portion of tensor apparatus or leaflet. And the approach is usually a closure of small defects in the anterior posterior leaflet using autologous or bovine pericardium or by direct suturing. Small vegetations which occur on the leaflet or quality tendony can be stripped off. And in case of uh, major destruction of the cardiac tissue, uh, in case of mitral valve uh, endocarditis, it's a challenge for repair. And the approach is usually uh, replacement of valve is an option, uh, but uh, risk of prosthetic valve endocarditis in this setting of uh, active infection is very high. So, and debridement of the infected tissue is usually done, uh, followed by sliding annuloplasty, partial leaf, leaf, uh, leaflet resection and or, or pericardial patch replacement or augmentation. Suture annuloplasty is usually pref preferred, in, uh, pr preferred to prosthetic ring. Biodegradable rings have also been used in active infection settings and has been shown to be safe. Now abs abscesses when found should be completely evacuated and surrounding tissue should be debrided. During this condition, uh, conduction abnormality and uh, atrioventricular or ventriculo arterial discontinu discontinuity is an important issue which needs to be addressed. Now uh, in mitral valve ring abscess which is seen just below the uh, mitral valve uh, posterior annulus is completely debrided, abscess is drained and the na native tissue valve is debrided and which is followed by the pericardial patch reconstruction of the posterior annulus and after that a prosthetic valve replacement can be done which is shown in the figure. Whereas in case of aortic valve uh, abscess, 
the abscess uh, which i already did, the, uh, the site of which i have already described should be completely drained and the native or neighboring tissue which is uh, infected or uh, destroyed should be totally excised and followed following that a prosthetic valve uh, can be uh, used for replacement uh, generally allograft is usual usually used now coming on to the choice of uh, devices uh, aortic valve in case of aortic valve allograft is the first choice but other cardiac uh, uh, devices have also have a good outcome uh, but if uh, the aortic root root replacement is considered then allograft is of not superior to other choices whereas in case of tricuspid uh, valve in fact endocarditis repair is attempted and if it fails or if it is not possible then allograft can be used whereas in mitral valve repair is uh, attempted and if it is not possible then mechanical valve can be used in case of recurrent uh, infection cardiac transplant can be considered in special uh, subgroups like the elderly patients valvular heart disease is increasingly frequent in aging population and uh, elderly patients undergo an increasing variety of invasive medical interventions uh, uh, patients with uh, more than 65 years of age have an increased risk of infective endocarditis and diagnosis in this group may be particularly difficult because of delayed presentation, subtle clinical signs and frequent use of empirical antibiotic therapy before coming to the hospital. In another subset uh, like intravenous drug abusers, the uh, intravenous drug users uh, predominant in series, uh, predominantly seen in series of younger people and the overall incidence of infective endocarditis in this group is 1 to 5 percent per year. The tricuspid valve is infected in more than 70 percent of cases and the majority have no known pre-existing pre cardiac diseases. In these patients, Staphylococcus aureus species predominant Although other unusual infections including Pseudomonas arginosa, fungi, Bartonella, Salmonella and Listeria may also be encountered, particularly in those who are infected with HIV for whom the outcome is inversely related to the CD4 count. This group of patients presents particular management difficulties because of their drug seeking behavior, poor compliance with treatment. Whereas in right-sided endocarditis, a conservative approach is recommended for majority of patients with infective endocarditis affecting the tricuspid or pulmonary valve. Recurrent pulmonary emboli are not, indicate, not an indication for surgery, which is only needed if fever persists despite three weeks of appropriate antibiotic treatment in absence of pulmonary abscess. Surgical options in these patients include debridement of infected area, vegetation excision, with either valve preservation or valve repair and excision of tricuspid valve with prosthetic valve replacement. Tricuspid valvectomy without use of prosthesis has been advocated in extreme cases but may be associated with severe post-operative right-sided failure, particularly in patients with pulmonary hypertension as a result of multiple pulmonary emboli. Preservation of native, valve pulmonary, valve, native pulmonary valve is recommended whenever possible and use of homograft or xenograft is preferred if replacement is required. Now devices related endocarditis. The incidence of infective endocarditis related to uh, permanent pacemakers, implantable defibrillator and rarely other in, uh, intracardiac devices is arising as a consequence of widespread use. Management in this setting is difficult and the entire system is uh, necessary entire system removal is necessary although advances in percutaneous techniques mean that involvement of this involvement of cardiac surgeon is usually not required when needed surgeon surgery requires adequate exposure under extracorporeal circulation to allow complete removal of foreign material and excision of all infected contact lesions at uh, the level of tricuspid valve right atrium free wall of the right ventricle and distal superior vena cava. Eradication of infection is essential before implantation of new system, which itself may require a second surgical approach. 
Now post op management and follow up. In the vast majority of patients, a total duration of 6 weeks of antibiotic therapy is recommended regardless the timing of surgery. Positive cultures of excised valve tissue usually reflects intended early valve surgery and do not indicate need for prolonged 6 weeks course of postoperative antibiotic therapy. In rare circumstances in which surgery is performed late and the valve cultures remain positive, the duration of postoperative treatment should be discussed with the microbiological team and tailored to the circumstances and characteristics of the patients. A postoperative transthoracic echocardiogram after completion of antibiotic therapy is helpful to confirm cure and provides a new base for further treatment. Now, follow-up of such patients is important. The survivors of surgery are high-risk groups of infectoendocarditis and patients should be made aware of the need to seek early medical advice for fever or other potentially concerning symptoms. Similarly, a family physician caring for these cohorts should be made aware of the need for blood culture sampling before use of empirical antibiotic therapy. Prosthetic valve infectoendocarditis is potentially avoidable and patient education about the importance of dental and skin hygiene and avoidance of unnecessary medical instrumentations, example intravenous cannulation, urinary catheterization and use of antibiotic prophylaxis at the time of appropriate invasive procedure is essential in this group. Thank you.